walked wildly through the guardrail, where I waved to the guard to stop the train. Yeah, I don't think going under the guardrail is going to go over well. So, let's get the guard to stop the train. I waved to the guards to stop the train. Tickets held aloft. He looked puzzled, but waved his flag. The train slowed a little, and I thanked him profusely, as I jumped aboard. We were passing Dartford, when I located Sir Fogg. In one of the compartments. He looked up briefly and returned to his newspaper. I told the ticket inspector that you'd be appearing presently, he remarked unperturbed. Your funds have gone down a little, and your character is now sharp. That's exactly what we want. We want to be sharp. So we're steadfast and sharp. I think those are good traits. Here is converse. Good conversation. I'm your service, Sir Fog. Pass up. Alright, we good conversation about money. This term will be most expensive, sir. Indeed, but we can earn a little from buying and selling our possessions as we travel. But tell me, sir, what is the purpose of our journey? I have made a hefty wager and do not intend to lose. Very good. Alright, we're come to the English Channel. London smog gave way to rolling hills and the pastures of the Kentish countryside, still untouched by the hand of technological advancement. Which, you know, it's 1872, I believe. Yeah, that's what it said at the beginning. So it makes sense that technology really hasn't penetrated the countryside yet. Like, are even tractors out yet in 1872? Or are we still about a decade or two away from that? That would be the first major thing that the rural areas, I would think. St. Munster read his paper, while well, they started packed their bags. Or we passed the day in silence. Well, uh, you don't want to get bored. So, repacking bags would be something at least to do. So Sir Fogg read his paper while this I repacked our, repla yeah, repacked our bags, thrown together in haste and confusion. His attention turned inexorably to evening, I discovered that my master was one of those gentlemen who broke their sides rarely, if at all. A guard rapped on our door. A few miles before Dover. We are just about to submerge, he warned. Take some people a bit funny, so watch out. What do you mean, submerge? But it's safe, is it not? Very good. Okay, I mean, submerging is kind of cool. But it is safe, is it not? Safety is our number one priority. But it's safe, is it not, I asked. A trifle nervously. I've done this route 300 times and haven't drowned, the guard replied carelessly. Every inch of the Amphitrite Express has been examined and stamped with the Artificer's Seal. This is the world's only Bathyscape locomotive. I cannot help but shiver. I press my face to the window glass. I mean, I kind of want to watch this immersion. No need to be nervous if it works. I press my face to the window glass as the fins above the am amphitrite's wheels extended with a hydraulic hiss. Night fell and we plunged past the end of the track into the freezing water of the English Channel. Your relationship with Fogg is strengthened slightly. So I guess he's the curious type too. I see things that are cool. As well with the technological advancements. So it's good to see our views are aligned. The, the, the Amphithrite 
Or Amphitrite. I think I finally got it. Amphitrite. Or Amphitrite. Yeah, the Amphitrite. The Amphitrite plowed through the water overnight. It splashed up onto water gauge, lighter gauge, French tracks at Calais. As dawn broke. Do you ruin mine, sir? I begin to consider we require on our journey. Yeah, you gotta think it through. Think it out. Okay, loose clothing for hot weather and furs for cold. Driving clothes for work for roads and waterproof gear for boats. Do we venture north or south? Well, we would have to purchase necessary items. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a good idea to ask. If we're going north or south. I inquired, deep in thought. East, he replied, with utter certainty. Even so, there are several routes to consider. But which is the fastest? But which is the safest? Well, if we're going to complete the journey in time, we need to know which is the fastest. But which is the fastest? I believe, said he. That is what we shall put to the test. Par blow, I scarcely knew what to think. We arrived at Paris just after one o'clock. Automaton porters lifted our luggage and then our persons onto the platform with long, delicately filigreed iron arms. Paris, city of my heart. I was home, but not to stay. So we're not to Paris quite yet, but we're almost there. Okay, there's the bank, there's the market, there's the store. Let's go to the market first. We can sell... 470. Just by this gentleman traveler set. Copenhagen or Budapest. I'm not sure which way we're going yet. We're not going, we're not going to Berlin. Let's play the traveling. And let's play the valet set. And let's explore the city. Let's see what we can do. Ah, oh, new routes discovered. Go to Munich, go to Nice. Okay, there's lots of places. We had a few hours to spare. I asked Sir Fogg if I might enjoy my city before we had to leave. Indeed, and should you learn anything of note, be sure to relay it. I nodded and headed into town. The talk on the streets was of one thing only. An enormous, elegant oval stadium, constructed upon the green fields of Chep de Mars and containing the technological marvels art, amusement parks, and milling crowds of the World's Fair of 1872. My city still wore the Scars Leicester Siege, which, if you don't know, that of course, we did Franco-Prussian War, which ended in 1871, with Prussia occupying Paris. And it allowed uh, Prussia to form Germany. Oh, part of Otto von Bismarck's plan. Okay. So, certain Sir Fogg died to me to the fairs, venture inside. Or my city still wore the scars. Maybe this will talk about the history. So, let's do something about that. My city still wore the scars last year's siege. As did I, Paris and France. It surrendered to the Prussian army after four and a half months of grim, blood-soaked resistance in the Franco-Prussian War. See? But the way memories of those grim days, or now this world there was intended to reassure this country's citizens. Yes, go with that. 
and the world also that the city of light was still a great capital of the world so i think it's a little early but uh later on i guess san francisco eventually becomes known as the paris of the west to like well, i guess you know the western hemisphere paris of the west essentially i did not doubt that but i was still somewhat overawed as i entered but perhaps there was something to be learned for my master inside and could not afford to lose myself to the huge huge exposition no i think you know you gotta be yourself and he would want us to learn too